everyone! Today I'm going to dive in just a little about the first stages of buying a home and the process leading to escrow. The first thing you're going to want to do is get pre-approved. This is a huge difference between just getting a pre-qualification or a letter from a lender. Those really don't mean much in today's market, so unfortunately they just don't cut it and a seller is looking for more. You really want to have a pre-approval from your lender. Again, this is not just a letter. Your approval should have figures on it and later be subject to final conditions to be met once you find a home of choice and open escrow. You can discuss that with your lender while in the approval process of what to expect. To come in even stronger with your offer and a step further would be to get a desktop underwritten approval, which means you've already gone through a more in-depth process of getting approved for the loan. This is a more confident approach and shows the seller that you are a more qualified buyer to proceed with the deal as opposed to maybe another. The last thing you wanna do is fall in love with a home, open escrow and God forbid have it fall through because you cannot obtain the funding. So even if you were approved months ago, make sure it is current and updated as rates have changed. So be sure to reach out to your lender, uh, discuss their approval process, see what programs and options for you they have, and what types of loans that may pertain to you. The typical loan is called a conventional loan, but there are also government-assisted programs, and if you have military background, VA loans may be an option for you. You will also go over your debt to income ratio to determine how much you can actually afford to pay monthly towards a mortgage, your taxes, insurance, a homeowners association, if any. So also keep in mind your utilities and any personal monthly expenses that you may have. Um, talk to them about their fees and possible buy downs of rates. These are all things that you will need to go through with your lender of choice. If you don't have one, I have several I can recommend. It's good to shop around, it's smart to figure out their fees, as well as who you feel most compatible with. Personality does matter. If you don't want to just be an online customer where you cannot get a hold of your lender or they're not readily avail available, either through text, phone call, or even a response through email takes days, you don't want that. If everything is done strictly online, once you get into escrow, it's gonna be more difficult if there's anything urgent or if something is needed throughout the escrow immediately and we can't get a hold of your lender. As your agent, I will need to have direct access to your lender. I don't need to get into any of the personal details or your financial history. I do, however, need to have clear communication with them so that when the time comes and I need to submit an offer for you, I can work hand in hand with them and be confident that we can proceed with your offer. Now, speaking of offers, uh, we when we begin to look at homes, it could be one, it could be a handful of them. Sometimes it's the first house you see, uh, you just know, maybe you've been looking online and so you're already aware of what is out there. And so when you do step foot in that one property, you fall in love and you just may wanna write an offer that day. So quick decision making really is key and beneficial in real estate. Uh, the house you were thinking about writing an offer on yesterday may be the same house someone is buying today. So just keep that in mind when house hunting. If you like it, act on it. So now we're ready to write. What do you need? The lender written pre-approval and your proof of funds. This would be your financial or bank statements that you have already supplied to your lender. I will submit proof of funds, pre-approval along with your offer. Now we will discuss what you're willing to offer, terms, timelines, all that. We'll get into more detail and more personally when I'm working alongside um, of you and not in this video. Now, when I say offers, I'm talking serious offers, not I want a house, but I'm just gonna see what sticks and I'm gonna lowball. Especially if you truly want the house, you don't wanna offend or upset the seller so that they totally reject your offer in entirety and then they don't wanna work with you at all. Obviously, I'll advise you during the process, uh, offering less than asking is fine to do as long as you're realistic about it. Sellers want to sell, and if you want to buy, you need to be in a serious mindset. No one wants to waste anyone's day, and all parties need to be respectful of that. It takes time on all sides to really negotiate a deal, and we should make it spent well. Um, this is including my sellers and having a realistic price point. Uh, once the offer is submitted, the seller can either accept it or counter. And if countering, we would then go through their counter offer together. I'll go step by step. You can either accept it or you can counter back. This can continue until both parties agree. It's usually quicker than you'd expect, um, and I work fast, so be ready. 
Uh, after the offer is accepted, all contracts are signed by both parties. We open escrow and um, I'll do another video on the escrow process later, but until then, let's get you approved. Let's get you out there looking and let's get an offer written and let's get you in that home of your dreams. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to my page to stay up to date on market trends and to get more info on buying and selling real estate with me, Shannon. Have a good one. Uh, blessings as always to you all and I'll see you again soon.